Hi, listeners, and welcome to the Nerds of Business podcast. My name is Darren Moffat. I'm a director of WebBuzz, the growth marketing agency, and I'm your host. It's great to have you with us for another one of our special uncut episodes. As I mentioned previously, season one on branding has finished, and we're currently in production for season two, which is on the theme of product development. So to tide us over just for a few more weeks until the new season begins, uh, we're airing a mix of uncut interviews and special bonus content from season one. Today's uncut session is part two of our mindset special, where we delve into the mindset secrets of top entrepreneurs. As I may have mentioned previously, throughout the branding series, I was fortunate enough to interview seven or eight top entrepreneurs from companies worth a combined $2.5 $2.5 billion. And at the end of each interview, I asked all of my entrepreneur guests a deceptively simple question. What habit or mental process do they use to channel their creativity? And while the answers I got were all different, there are some fascinating common threads that I think provide a rare insight into how top entrepreneurs really think. So if you're interested in learning how to improve your own mindset from some of the best entrepreneurs in the business, then stick around for part two of the Mindset Special coming up right now. We'll return in two weeks with the first episode, hopefully, of season two on product development. But right now, I hope you enjoy this special edition of Nerds of Business Uncut. I love data. I love kind of looking through the data. You need to have systems, you need to have structure. You're going to get chopped to pieces. Enthusiasm is unstoppable. We kind of hit a point where we were like, we need another lever. Drown yourself with people who are smarter than you and richer than you. (laughs) This is Nerds of Business. The first entrepreneur guest today is Rob Newman. Rob is the CEO of international mapping platform Nearmap. Nearmap have achieved a $1 billion valuation on the Australian Stock Exchange. And Rob himself has a long history as a successful entrepreneur and venture capitalist. Now, Rob shares an amazing story here of how one mindset technique that he still uses today led directly to a key early breakthrough in his career that arguably set the foundation for his entire business journey. Rob, we're coming to the end of our chat today, uh, or the, certainly the, the formal part of it. Um, the last question I'd like to ask you is more of a personal question. So having chatted with a lot of entrepreneurs and um, got a lot of close friends who are, you know, own and run businesses, I find that most are deep thinkers you know, with a restless mind. So whether it's meditation or a nice bottle of red occasionally, do you have – a mental habit or process that you've used to channel your creativity over the years? Yes. Running. 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 Yeah. Running. Awesome. Let me tell you a little, sto- let me tell you a little story because this probably uh, was part of what set me on the whole career path that I've been on. Okay. Um, I was an undergrad engineer at the time mm-hmm. and uh, my supervisor had set me a very complex problem to solve. And I had spent, well, by this stage, months working on this problem and I got to the kind of peak of the problem and I had literally had buried my head inside that problem. And I was a runner at the time, still a runner today. Um, and, uh, you know, I said, okay, I, I'm just so frustrated. I'm going out for a run. Ten minutes into the run, I go, that's the answer. Yeah. That's it. That one insight, I let the subconscious mind overtake the conscious mind. I needed all the conscious work to create the problem. You need to think analytically, you need to think deeply, but at some point you've got to let go. And the run for me, 10 minutes into the run, I said, oh, if I count this little thing here, that solves the whole problem. The whole problem is solved. So then I went to my supervisor the next day and said, what about this? He said, oh, that's fantastic. That idea, that 10 minutes into the run, turned into a multi-million dollar revenue company that sold product to telcos all around the world, became an international standard and, a, and a, the most cited paper in, in um, academic journals for, for a number of years. Right? 
<laughs> okay, well, I, I think I might get into jogging. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll give up the pies and the wine and I'll, I'll, I'll start running around the block. Um, that's a, you've, you've sold me on that, Rob. Thanks for that. Um, and so how often uh, these days, uh, you know, do, do, you, do you turn to that technique? You know, if you hit a roadblock, if there's a real problem that you know, you're facing in the business, um, a challenge that you've got to solve, like, is that something you still turn to? Absolutely. And look, you know, I'm, I'm much older now and uh, you were kind of kind to me before in this interview. I'm probably far further into my career than uh, the 50% that you suggested. But anyway, um, look, so I've, I've accumulated over 40 years of running a very large number of injuries. So I can't always run as well as I like, but I will get outside. Yeah. Um, even in the middle of the day, if I'm, if it's been a challenging morning um, and uh, I'll go, okay, I'm just going to walk. I'm going to go walk for 15 minutes, see the sun. Mm-hmm. Um you know, look, I, I care very deeply about mental health as well for, you know, it's a whole different conversation. But um, I believe that uh, things that create great happiness are just going outside, seeing the sun, creating that clearness of mind, you know. So even in the middle of the day, I'll get out and just do a walk for 15 minutes and go, oh, okay, just calm down, think, or not even think, just clear the mind, right? Yeah. And uh, But I always, as much as possible, run home from work um, at the end of the day because that clears my head, turns me into a human before I get into the apartment here. Take at off the, the, the Superman outfit, the metaphorical Superman outfit, yep. back into that nice uh, sort of... Yeah, mild. exactly. And, yeah. and look, you know, I was dealing with a very challenging issue a, a month ago and, and I wasn't able to run home that day for whatever reason I forget. And, mm. and uh, my wife was saying, you know, what's wrong with you? you know, why do you keep looking outside and, and looking out at out the window? And, and, you know, it took me time to realize actually I hadn't had that cl- clarity of a, a run or a walk home. Yeah, right. Our second entrepreneur in today's mindset special is Andre Eichmeier. Andre is, is, is a co-founder of Vino Mofo, a $100 million online wine retailer. Now, Andre was a delight to talk to, uh, and he's got some firm opinions on the creative process that I think we can all learn from. Concept. Uh, I, my, again, one of my little pet theories is that I think most top entrepreneurs are deep thinkers and with a restless mind. Um, so if that's true uh, for you perhaps, um, uh, whether it's meditation or a nice bottle of red, do you have a mental habit or process that you've used over the years to really channel your creativity? Uh yeah, I have in terms of ideating, I carve out the space. Mm-hmm. So efficiency and productivity are the enemy of creativity. You need to indulge in the space to ask the right questions and to allow mm-hmm. your mind to wander yep. and explore. So I do that. But I want to say that more, the more important ritual or thing that I've had to work out is to get through, is to, is to combat the... The, the, the stress and the unrest of a restless mind, because I, I think you've nailed it in your description of entrepreneur, and I think that's perspective. Uh-huh. You keep needing to come back to perspective and place yourself forwards and go, okay, it's not the end of the world, and there is a way through, and even if it doesn't work out, then okay, that will have been this chapter of my life anyway. I think that's vital yep. for an entrepreneur. Wow, great answer. Thank you. Yeah, that's and uh, you know it really is about the time to think, and that's again, you know, like it's a fast-paced world. You know, I get it, but um, I think it's really important to have that time and space to think because that's when the great ideas come. Uh, there's there's almost no shortcut to that. If you want some really genuinely sort of um, out of the box, you know, brilliant ideas, you've just got to put in the t- in the thinking time. Do you know um, what else? Because collaboration also does it, right? It's not so much about you carving the time out for yourself, which you need to do. So I, I'm i really anti this movement around less meetings and shorter meetings and blah, blah, blah. I just think if you're going to have one that's meant to try and come up with an idea or a solution, give it the time and the space and the right people and, and also create a, create a container, create a culture of safety and trust yep. so that people can be vulnerable. It's vulnerable to get creative. Yep. You know? And, you know... <clears throat> You got to create. You got to. You got to create the space to do that. Which means you can't shut people down. You can't pressure them. Time. You can't put results suddenly and accountability on ideas at that time. That comes next, but not at the time when you're trying to ideate or yep. get creative. I think. Yep. Great. Um, so less data, less f-ing efficiency and productivity. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I think these are things to consider. 
Um, you, you've got a sympathetic audience here. I think you probably worked that <laughs> out. Uh, I mean, look, you know, data is important, but yeah, this stuff is this is the stuff that builds tribes. You know, as we as we mentioned earlier, data doesn't build tribes. Um, I think data is important to measure. Correct. Something as it goes. I don't think data is as valuable as we think it is to identify opportunities. Or I know we use it as such, and sure, but yeah. I don't think that's how you build something that you stand for something that is consistent that people are going to care about and talk about. Yeah. Our final entrepreneur in today's uncut session is Mike Berland of data marketing firm from New York City, Decode M. Mike shares his secret for achieving optimal creative mindset. But a word of warning: it's not for the faint-hearted. Again, it's a, it's a, the, the segues here are, are really uh, quite interesting. Um, so, what you're alluding to there is that it's a, it's a sense of restlessness. Yeah. Yes. And and yeah. I actually find that um, in my talks with uh, entrepreneurs over the years, uh, and and for nerds of business, that most top entrepreneurs are are deep thinkers with a restless mind. Uh, so, for you personally, Mike, do you have a mental habit or process that you use to channel that creativity for you, for your business? Okay, you can't make fun of me when I tell you what it is because it's it's. Um, you're going to say that's hardly relaxing. I am an Ironman, which oh. means um, I do the races of uh, two and a half mile swim, 112 mile bike, and 26 mile run. I can, if Ironman requires continuous data analysis for for me for 14 hours, but for other people it can be less or more to understand it. And what's my pace? What's my heart rate? How what am I eating right? How does my body feel? Am I hydrating to make it through? And that is the most relaxing thing because nobody really talks to me. I'm in my own head and I'm just I'm just enjoying life and and practicing. If you're going to ride 112 miles, you got to do a bunch of practice rides. And there's really no one to talk to when you're riding a bike. Wow. Okay. So yeah. So you actually uh, yeah. It's 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 it's, it's the um, computational rec- recreational activity of the body for a for a data yeah. analytics guy. Wow. It's fun. It's fun, and um, it's a mental challenge. Anybody can do Iron Man, but who's mentally tough enough to do it? And do you find that you 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 know when you're sort of in that sort of meditative zone on the bike, you know, you're out there sort of practicing. Do you find that that's when you get those ideas or when some of those insights like that, aha, that's how I put that oh together. Oh, my God. They, they all come on. They, they all come there because, I mean, it is a little boring. Yeah. Like, can you imagine, can you imagine riding your bike for uh, seven hours? Uh, no, I cannot. <laughs> and, no, and neither can my bum. So, you yeah. guys, so your, your mind is racing. Yeah. Um, and you're making sure that the car doesn't hit you. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. It's uh, and, and and I told you, I told you, it's not like everybody wants to. Oh no, I meditate or I fast or no, I do Iron Man. Well, I ask that question of all my guests, and it's very interesting. Um, while we're on the subject subject of data, there's definitely a, uh, a uh, some a correlation um, or or some some pattern in the data. A lot of entrepreneurs are either runners uh, oh. or, or you know they're cyclists or uh, I, have, I haven't had an Ironman yet. That. Yeah, I haven't had an Ironman yet, but I do get a lot of runners. Um, yeah, because uh, running's the same. It's the same vibe. Yeah, yeah, and it's um, yeah, it's just sort of getting into that meditative uh, mindset. 